both of you yes thank you thank you bhuvan ji for giving us an opportunity to present it to your clients i remember in 2017 18 we have done a first event yeah. in dubai with the fund uh, uh, a series 1 okay yes. uh, the series 1 many of the our investors invested into it and uh, uh, i can proudly say that despite all these challenges our all investors had doubled their money post taxes absolutely so, yeah. so uh, credit goes to you and pankaj bhai both because you believe in this product and pankaj bhai has invented this product and because of that our clients are making this money so after the success of that series 1 we came up with series 2 now and uh, uh, the, this series 2 is also the same uh, uh, at a note uh, when we were talking in 2017 18 we are talking about state bank of india we are talking about tata motors we are talking about indian economic recovery and many of us was not ready to believe in that point of time and today everybody want to buy icici sbi and all the stocks which we were talking on that point of time tata motors so similar well. <laughs> so on this Pankaj note uh, right. yeah <laughs> so pankaj bhai came up with another fresh thing okay which is not at the uh, on that popular in the market right now but mm. uh, he is always talk about the next bull run leaders so mm. rather than betting in the old veteran leaders okay if you want to make more money into the market so in my perspective there are three ways to make money if you want to make money as what markets are giving you buy etf okay you will get as far as what markets returns are Hmm. If you will buy some of the active managers, okay, then you will have a one or two percent alpha. Right. But if you are, if you want to be a one, two, three, four step ahead in the market, then you need to identify early winners, okay, who are going to be a next leaders into this bull run. Yeah. So we have a right gentleman who understand this story and price both at the same time, which many right. few fund managers know into the market. So Absolutely. without taking your uh, much time. i would request pankaj sir to present uh, current uh, uh, theme which is india next fund series 2 call bits to all our clients and investors and as uh, bhuvan ji said uh, we need to understand from you uh, you must have seen many wars and many crises into the market so what one should do at this point of time so, so over to you pankaj sir thank you so much ek minute mai bhi lunga pankaj ji just to yeah. introduce you in a simple manner there is a very good uh, guys morning all of you uh, for joining the saturday morning i will request you not only hear pankaj ji also invest with him uh, and i'll tell you why so i've been reading a book of late and there is a famous investor in the us and he said the simple thing in investing is to find a stock and find its worth and pay a lot less for it which means if a stock is worth 100 dollar you pay 40 dollar you are going to make money and his track record is 40% for a decade plus pankaj ji is the exact replica of him and we have been discussing this earlier also so a lot of you do not like your 100 dollar to go to 90 and probably pankaj is that man who will not maybe will not give you a lot of gain but will not give you that much of pain so pankaj ji over to you uh, from the axis bank journey if you can start and please take it ahead and talk about the global macro and the product sure thank you bhonji and thank you pratesh for kind words uh, and good morning friends uh, i appreciate you all taking your time out on a saturday morning uh, uh, for this conversation so what i'll do is i will straight away uh, i want to make this interaction now that you've taken a time out on a saturday morning uh, it's important that we make the best use of your valuable time uh, so what i intend to do is uh, i intend to keep my discourse brief probably about 25 30 minutes and then leave the floor open for q and a so that we can have a more interactive session and uh, feel free to ask me questions anything that relates to macro oil prices russia ukraine i'm sure those questions or anything that relates to india investing portfolios and all of that and i what i'll do is i'll straight away start with this whole uh, this product indian x fund 2 that we are launching explain the concept of that and probably i'll also give my perspective on some of the recent uh, events which are on top of everyone's mind and how uh, at least i'm thinking about uh, them and then we open the floor for questions yeah i hope that uh, this is okay with all of you If, if during the course of the presentation also if you have any questions uh, uh, feel free to raise your hands and ask the question during the course of it also uh, i am okay with that as well or we can take it at the end uh, whichever way you you all feel comfortable friends yeah so just allow me a, a moment i'll just share my 
uh, uh, screen with your friend. Just give me a sec. Okay, so before I begin, I just give a small, uh, I think, uh, since Bhuvanji mentioned that, I give a small introduction on myself. I've been around, uh, I've been around now for about 25 years into, uh, as a professional investor into Indian equity. Uh, Renishma is about five years old now. Before Renishma, I was part of the founding team and a chief I set up <laughs> as a co-founder, Access Mutual Fund for Access Bank. And I was a chief investment officer for Access Mutual Fund. 10 years I was there, each of the 10 years Access was one of the fastest growing AMC in India uh, and now it is amongst the, uh, I think it's the seventh highest AMC in India. I used to run uh, 4 billion US dollars into Indian equities. And before that, I've had the privilege to work with some other uh, great investors, including uh, uh, Ramdevji at Motilal Oswal. I also happened to work with Merrill Lynch and UTI AMC. Yeah? So that's a small brief about myself. So let me just straight away uh, hit to the point, friends. We've launched this new fund called BITS. Uh, BITS is an acronym for digital economy. I think the future of India and of the world is digital. And we've also acronymized BITS with four underlying themes of BITS, which is brand, internet, technology, and science. And I'll touch or talk uh, a bit about all of this and this fund and why this fund more importantly. Before that, okay, since they touched upon our first fund and I presume I've been given to understand that some of you here on the call are investors into our first year. So I thought I'll give you a very quick update on that. That fund was launched in August 18. The underlying theme of that fund was Indian economic recovery. That fund was launched because in 2018, we had reached a stage where Indian economy had, uh, had experienced a very sharp slowdown because of uh, uh, a lot of disruptive reforms that were done by the government at that point of time uh, in India, including starting with demonetization in October, November 2016, and then introduction of uh, goods and services tax in India, followed by introduction of a bankruptcy bill in India, by virtue of which a lot of large companies in India were dragged to bankruptcy court. And uh, real estate is a large sector in India, and we did not have a bill or regulation to regulate that. And the government introduced a real estate bill with, uh, which led to a very sharp slowdown in the real estate sector in India as well. So while there was a lot of gloom and doom at that point of time on the Indian economy, uh, I, feel, I felt extremely optimistic about the longer term prospects of the Indian economy. And which is why we launched this fund uh, at that point of time. And the underlying theme, as I said, of that fund was India economic recovery. Because I believe that probably uh, the slowdown that the Indian economy was witnessing at that point of time was transitory. And over a medium term to long term, Indian economy will do very well. And the uh, idea of that fund was to invest into companies which are very closely related to the Indian economy or whose business is completely dependent on the domestic Indian economy. Uh, that fund has done pretty well. Uh, I have a performance update for all of you all. Uh, uh, this is slightly dated because this presentation was made three, four months back. So this performance update is as of 15th October. But... For anyone who's interested, we have the latest performance update also. Bhuvanji and Pritesh and Mutilal Swal team can share that. So from the time of launch in August 18 till October 15th, October 21, this fund had done a 23.5% CAGR return analyzed over the uh, three and a half years versus the underlying benchmark returns of 16% uh, for Nifty. And the only caveat here is that the fund returns are post-tax because what happens in an AIF structure in India is the fund pays the tax. So when the investors receive their money uh, on redemption uh, or closure of the fund, uh, they don't have to pay taxes. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think it's been a, a pretty good journey for that fund. And we still have uh, one and a half years still left in the life of the fund. And uh, I, I, I still think that that uh, fund has a lot of steam left or the companies or the portfolio looks pretty good and as now that Indian economy is coming out of COVID driven uh, lockdowns and unlocks over the next year, year and a half, uh, that portfolio should do exceedingly well. So be that as it may be, I thought I'll, I owe it to uh, some of you who have been investing into a first fund and showed that trust and faith in us while investing uh, in our fund. I thought I'll give you this uh, quick update. Uh, moving on to the next fund, uh, Indian X Fund 2, uh, uh, which is what we are talking going to talk about today. So as I said, friends, uh, the underlying theme of this fund is uh, what we call BITS, uh, uh, which is these four sectors underlying the theme. 
the idea with this fund is very simple uh, before i talk in detail maybe let me give you a very high level perspective on the uh, fund so the idea is very simple friends last two years have been an outlier year for all of us uh, in the world because of uh, covid it's a once a century kind of pandemic that all of us have experienced uh, uh, in that sense the good thing is that we are now nearing the end of the pandemic uh, with omicron now uh, becoming a flu like a syndrome which effectively means that uh, uh, covid the virus is uh, obviously all of us understand that the virus is going to stay with us in our society now for the next at least uh, at least for at least one generation right which means effectively 25 years but i think the virus has made peace with all of us uh, in that sense by becoming a uh, from uh, moderating itself from uh, and transitioning to a flu like a virus which is mild enough for us to live with and deal with and effectively last two years for every economy in the world has been driven by lockdowns and unlocks and uh, we have so effectively we haven't had a normalized lifestyle and normalized economy but i think as we get into next year now from india perspective next financial year starting from april we should look forward to a more normalized uh, lifestyles and normalized economy having said that uh, while covid will become uh, covid is behind us uh, but uh, covid has had a deep impact uh, on our behavior as human beings and on our society and some of those impact some uh, uh, some of those things uh, are permanent in nature the change that is induced by covid is permanent while well, covid will not be around but these changes are permanent in nature and they've changed our behavior uh, of human beings of society and of business forever so essentially now when we look at businesses we have to look at it in the context of uh, uh, the post covid world to my mind will be different in many dimensions and it has obviously implications for all of us uh from uh, our own business perspective and also from investing perspective uh so my firm view is for example and we'll talk about some of these things in terms of covid driven changes in the post covid world as we go along through this presentation uh but fundamentally uh if one thing that covid has clearly done is uh it has uh, from an india perspective is it has accelerated the uh transition or the adoption of technology in india a lot of things in terms of technological adoption were happening in india over the last 5 uh, 10 years uh, uh, and covid has really accelerated that whole process or journey uh, uh, for example uh, meaning uh, courtesy covid all of us are doing this conversation over zoom uh, and honestly speaking uh until january 20 pre covid until january 20 i did not even knew that a company like zoom did exist in the world yeah and despite the fact that it was already listed i was not aware of it so obviously uh covid has now increased our technology consumption or for example a lot of things uh that we were doing physically pre covid now we have started doing digitally so i firmly believe all of us as human beings and as society are undergoing a digital digital transition for example lot of us including myself we used to read newspapers physically pre covid and now we have got used to for the last two years because physical newspapers were not available we have got used to reading newspapers on our uh, handheld devices which effectively means uh, that one hour which or 40 minutes or whatever we spend uh, spended uh, we expended uh, reading newspapers physically now we are doing digitally the current generation our next generation children and all of that due to covid they took all their lessons in even schools on zoom right all through for this two years effectively they are defined as someone who are born digital so effectively they live in a very different world and they are digitally native as we call them uh, because they are just digitally wired and uh, as they say in the world that 20 years out uh, by 2050 the whole world will be 100% digital everything in the world will be digital because by that time the next generation would have taken over and they would be doing everything digitally they will not do anything physically and all of us also are adopting to that gradually at different pace for example uh, today of all the things i do during the day probably 40% of the things i do now i do digitally versus only 20% being digital 
let's say three or four years back, and there are people who are eighty percent digital. So all of us are on this digital journey, and which effectively means there's a change in behavior of human beings and the society. And if that be the case, uh, then I think it has uh, meaningful implications for businesses. And if it has implications for businesses, then it has meaningful implications for all of us as investors because we invest in businesses. So my view is to summarize all of this: is the world is uh, in the uh, and probably Western world has uh, Western world actually undergone U.S. Europe underwent this transition even and for that matter China also because China is significantly ahead of India in terms of digitization, adoption of digital. So Western world has undergone this digitization much ahead of India and probably I would like to think uh, 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 probably in India we are fifteen twenty years behind them. So whatever has happened in the Western world in the last 15, 20 years probably will happen in India in India over the next 10, 15 years. And in the post-COVID world, I think these are the four sectors uh, underlying the BITS hypothesis, which is brand, internet, technology, and science, which will have the fastest growth in India over the next 10, 15 years. So the idea with this fund is very simple, is we believe that these are the four sectors or themes which will have the fastest growth uh, uh, in India over the next 10, 15 years. And within this, each of these four themes, we want to invest into uh, four or five companies in each of these themes, which are leaders in their respective sectors. Effectively create a portfolio of 20, 25 companies across four diverse themes. And collectively we'll get a portfolio of companies which will be amongst the, uh, which will come from sectors which probably will have the fastest growth in India. Uh, and these will be the companies which will be business leaders within that sector. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I, I would like to think that some of the, uh, the common DNA across these companies uh, will be uh, that these companies, because they will be high growth companies and they are already leaders in the uh, high growth sector, they have very strong competitive edge in their business because otherwise it's very difficult to become a leader in a very competitive market like India or economy like India. Uh, in high growth sectors, because there is com all of us know competition in India is extremely stiff. And these companies, because they'll deliver consistent growth over a long period of time, some of these companies will really become some of the leading companies of India. Meaning just think about, let's say, uh, Amazon in US, right? 20 years back in 2000, Amazon was a very small company. Yeah. In fact, after, in 2001, after the technology meltdown, people all over the world, including in US, questioned, uh, raised question marks over, about survival of Amazon, whether Amazon will survive or not. And the fact is that they've had such a stellar track record of growth over the last 20 years that it's become not only the leading company in US, but it's become the leading company in the world. So if India is going to emerge over the next 10, 15 years, then if, and if you happen to invest, uh, if we happen to invest into some of the fastest growing companies in India, then they, I have no doubt in my mind that some of these companies will become not only leading companies of India, but if India becomes uh, among the leading economies in the world, then they will become global companies as well. Yeah, so that's the very high level perspective on this fund. Uh, and the good thing is, uh, if you just study the life cycle of successful companies, you know, uh, as to what makes this company successful and how those companies operate, then one common DNA across all these companies is once they get into these companies operate in a virtuous, uh, almost in a virtuous cycle. It's kind of a winner's cycle, I call it, you know, because these companies have a uh, very strong competitive edge or moat in their business as a result of which they have very strong growth or high growth. Because of they have high growth, they tend to have uh, uh, reasonably healthy or very solid profits and cash flows. And these companies are extremely competitive and aggressive, which effectively means what they do is they go back and invest all of that money or profits they make or significant part of that money back into their business so as to grow their business even further. Meaning again, I uh, relate you to the same example of let's say Amazon. Amazon started with a, uh, you know, uh, uh, with a platform for online retail. From there, now you have AWS, uh, which was not even there in 2001. They launched AWS. Uh, we have uh, the media business of Amazon, and now Amazon is likely to probably compete with you know they're launching another business. They're carving out of their own Amazon this thing. Uh, which is into logistics and they're going to compete with DHL and uh, uh, it's going to become one of the largest uh, logistics uh, company globally uh, once they carve that business out. So, you know, uh, that's what these companies do. Once they grow, uh, they use cash flows from one business to keep building business one after another. 
and over a period of time they become very large colossal giant uh, kind of a thing yeah uh, so uh, 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 let me what, let me just walk you through very quickly uh, uh, through each of these themes about when we're talking about you know each of these four themes the idea with brands is simple friends uh, as customers uh, all our lives uh, revolves around brands uh, every everything that we do right from uh, you know morning to evening uh, uh, revolves around brands uh, uh, you know uh, when we buy any product let's say right from our toothpaste in the morning to our apparels to our phones we are always making a choice of a brand meaning whether we are choosing a colgate or a dabar or a pepsodent or we are, when we are buying a phone we are choosing apple or a samsung or when we are choosing a service provider in indian context whether it's a jio or a airtel or when you are choosing your financial service provider whether it's a hdfc bank or a kotak bank or a icici bank or we are buying apparels we are making a choice between whatever the brands are zara or uh, whatever uh, h&m or so on and so forth so our life revolves around brands yeah and uh, it's generally observed that as customers once we start liking a brand or uh, appreciating a brand or we are happy with the uh, uh, services that that the product or service that that brand provides we tend to develop some sort of a loyalty with that brand yeah for example let's say if i i am a post customer of colgate toothpaste for the last 40 years then whatever happens uh, however incentive anyone gives me i am not going to change my toothpaste because i don't want to go through an experience of putting some fancy gel inside my mouth uh, you know after being used to something uh, some sort of a taste uh, for 40 years now which effectively means in in me colgate has got a very loyal customer to which colgate doesn't have to do any more selling they don't have to convince me they don't have to do any marketing to me yeah and i tend to be loyal customer with colgate even despite the fact that every year colgate increases the price of its same product uh, you know by 5 10% so in a in a way i like uh, i believe I, i feel that they fleece me because they charging me higher price every year for the same product and as a result colgate's profit keeps growing every year uh, and i am the one who's paying for that and yet uh, i don't have a, either i don't have a choice or i don't mind paying that because i just uh, uh, appreciate the service or the product they're giving to me you know uh, likewise let's say i'm sure most of your iphone users however cheap or attractive samsung or xiaomi may be uh, every year apple launches a new version and all of us very happily pay for it despite knowing the fully the fact that apple is just ripping us but we feel good uh, despite being ripped off you know Uh, so the good thing is what we realize is companies which have very successful brands tend to build a very loyal customer base and as a result they keep uh, you know and once you build that then you can build a very profitable franchise out of it because your customers would not change or switch because they are in love with your product and you can keep just uh, you know making money by selling more and more to the same set of customers Uh, last 20 years some of the biggest brand, uh, i mean i can give you a classic example of apple all of you know apple apple was you know not amongst the in year 2000 apple was not amongst the top 100 companies in us and at one point of time it was on the brink yeah now the magic of apple is it started with one whatever macbook all of us know uh, people loved macbook and then they launched iphone all of us loved iphone and they realized they used the brand equity of iphone to launch ipad then apple music apple tv and what not right and some point of time probably by 2025 all of us might be driving an apple car as well uh, why not yeah so you use the brand equity of one brand successful brand and you just build the whole ecosystem around it and launch more and more products and customers are more than happy to buy it. the magic of that is that apple which was a very small company in 2000 for 20 years from 2000 to 2020 20 years apple did 20% revenue kegar their revenue grew at 20% every year for 20 years 20% growth over 20 years effectively means apple's revenue went 35 times from 8 billion dollars in 2000 to 275 billion dollars in 2020 i'm not even talking about the profit growth or shareholder returns you can google and see those numbers those numbers are mind blowing mind blowing i don't want to give a shock to any of you but those numbers are just mind blowing but revenue grew 35 times and the outcome was apple became the largest market cap company in the world 
All I'm trying to say is some of the biggest brands over the last 20 years, friends, have been created out of US and more importantly, out of China. Yeah. Uh, over the next 10 or 15 years or the next 20 years, the biggest, India will be the fastest growing economy in the world. That's a given. And India will also have the fastest growing and the highest increase in discretionary consumption. Spends by Indian consumers because as economy grows, per capita income will increase. And as a result, uh, discretionary consumption or spends from Indian cust customers, Indian population, Indian consumers will increase. Which effectively means some of the new global brands will be created in India because that is where the incremental spending power will emerge. And which is why all global brands, uh, however big or small, want to have a place in India. While global brands will succeed, but I'm sure a lot of Indian brands will also emerge. And just think about it, meaning uh, uh, it's very foolish on my part because I was one of the early adapters of iPhones in 2005. I used to work with Merrill Lynch those days and I was in US and I happened to buy an iPhone and I used it for two weeks and I just fell in love with it. And it was so naive on my part that if the product was so great, the simplest thing I should have done by then in 2005 was I should have bought Apple stock, which I did not. I, 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 I don't invest internationally because being in India, all my money is in India. And that point of time, international investing was not allowed. But I'm just saying it was so simple at that point of time. If the product was great, just why use the product? Because the customers, companies, if you become a customer of that product, as it is, the company, the manufacturer or service provider is going to fleece you by charging you more and more and you will happily pay for it. So why not become the owner of that company also? Because the product is so great, you yourself believe into it, right? And if you believe into it, then I'm sure you are, all of us are rational people. So the whole world will believe into it. And if that be the case, why not become the owner of that company or business by owning Apple, right? Which is what I did not do in 2005. But I'm saying the same opportunity is ahead of us in India today because there are a lot of great products here and a lot of companies with very strong brands which are going to grow phenomenally over the next 15, 20 years. And if that be the case, the idea with uh, our whole philosophy or hypothesis under brands is to buy into some of these companies which have very strong brands and which will have a non-linear growth over the next 10, 15, 20 years. And we just want to become owners of that. I mean, this is another example of a company called Zara, Inditex. Uh, I'm sure many of you are aware of it. Inditex is a company which owns Zara, the apparel brand. They are the largest apparel, uh, largest apparel manufacturer in the world. Uh, the owner of uh, Zara, it's a Spanish company. Uh, the owner is amongst the, some point of time, was amongst, he was among the top 10 richest in the world. So again, Zara has had a similar story. They started with one apparel brand, Zara, over a period of time, customers loved it and they have launched three, four apparel brands. Because customers loved Zara apparels, then they went to Zara Home, where they started, they launched home furnishings. From there, they launched Zara Beauty uh, because people loved, uh, uh, customers appreciated beauty products from Zara and they're doing so many other things. Uh, virtue of all of this, uh, again, last 20 years, uh, Zara has grown at 14% CAGR. Uh, the revenues have grown at 14% CAGR. So revenue has gone 10, 11 times. Profits and shareholder returns have again been mind-blowing. 14% revenue growth in a global context for a 20-year, on a sustained basis for 20-year, is very, very phenomenal by any stretch of imagination. And Zara is amongst one of the leading uh, apparel and fashion companies worldwide. So idea is, friends, uh, simple to invest into uh, some of the leading brands in India. And I think some of these brands will become global brands over the next 15, 20 years as India emerges and as Indian consumers emerge. So that's about brands. Uh, the second uh, hypothesis uh, or the framework that we I talked about is internet. Uh, I need not explain you more. All of us know uh, the whole digital uh, revolution. I think India's internet evolution is at a J curve where we're going to have a hockey stick growth from here on. Uh, uh, two important things that happened was one, uh, the launch of Jio uh, as a telecom service provider in India, which uh, reduced data prices significantly in India over the last five, six years, as a result of which data consumption is exploded. Jio now with help of Google is launching a smartphone in India, at, which will be available at five and a half thousand rupees, which effectively means that smartphone will go to every nook and corner of India. And in a digital world, that is what counts. Um, I just saw last week, there was a report by IDC, I think, which said that by 2025, India will have 1 billion smartphone users, uh, <clears throat> which will be the second largest in the world after China. So by 2025, we'll be the second largest uh, we, by the sheer power of our population. 
will be the country with the second highest smartphone penetration in the world after China, and will be very much at par with all the Western world. So our internet economy has been growing very well over the last seven eight years, but I still think it's a very early days for internet economy because internet evolution and penetration is a twenty year thirty year story. Uh, so India's internet economy has a very long way to go, and I think this is one segment of Indian economy. Even if India grows at seven eight percent or thereabouts. Over the next, uh, uh, let's say, fifteen twenty years, eight nine ten percent, India's internet economy will grow at least three x, two to three x of that, which effectively means I believe India's internet economy will grow at twenty thirty percent over the next ten years. And this is nothing surprising because this is some, something exactly what has happened in US and Europe over the last fifteen twenty years. So what has happened there, uh, and even in China for that matter, Alibaba was a small company in two thousand. Uh, we know what Alibaba is all about, or Tencent is all about, or Taobao is all about, or a JD is all about, right? We've seen the Chinese internet evolution in the last twenty years. So I, I I don't see any reason why something similar should not happen to Indian internet companies over the next fifteen twenty years, which effectively means, and we have also seen the kind of wealth. Uh, uh, I mean, obviously these companies have grown, their size and scale has grown, their profits have grown multifold, and uh, shareholder returns or value of these companies have also have grown. Uh, Uh, phenomenally well, and if all of that is the case, then I must also tell you, amongst the large economies in the world, yeah, India is the only country now left where internet penetration is so low. So where the internet penetration has to play out over the next ten, fifteen, twenty years. Once that plays out in India, then it's done, right? Because Europe, Asia is done, Japan is done, China is done, Asia is large. Most of the Asian countries are ahead of India. If you look at Korea, Taiwan, Thailand. Vietnam, they are ahead of India in terms of the internet penetration. So, and they are not so large economies by itself. So, India is the only last large economy where this whole internet story has to play out. Uh, so, I think that's a very significant opportunity uh, uh, for the world and for every company which is into this business. But for us as investors also, because we get to participate into some of these companies. Uh, if we could not buy into Alibaba in 2000, or we could not buy into a Facebook or a, uh, or a, uh, Amazon in 2000 in US. I think we have the similar kind of opportunity today in Indian markets to buy into some of these future internet, some of these companies, internet companies in India, which are going to be the future Alibaba or future uh, uh, ten cents uh, uh, that will emerge from India. So I don't think so. We can let go of this opportunity. I feel very excited about this whole internet opportunity uh, that lies ahead of uh, ahead of all of us. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, uh that's briefly these are some of the internet uh, there are lot in india's internet economy is still emerging so a lot of these companies were unlisted 3 years back a lot of these companies have got listed over the last one year and i'm sure many more will get listed there are some concerns on valuation of the internet companies so we have to be careful in terms of selecting the right companies but leaving the valuation aside it does not take away the fact that these companies will grow at 20 30 40% over the next 10 15 20 years but we have to be selective Uh, and make sure that we're picking the right stocks, and that is where I think, uh, hopefully, our experience of our team will come into play. So that's about internet friends. Uh, the uh, next framework is technology. I think all of us are living at a time where, uh, uh, multiple technological disruption are happening uh, simultaneously. We live in a world which is getting disrupted. Uh, and it's getting disrupted at a at a very accelerated pace. Uh, uh, and if at all anything, uh, COVID has only accelerated that whole pace of disruption. COVID has really fastened or accelerated that pace of disruption. Whenever these kind of disruptions happens, there are two sides to it. You know, there are companies uh, which are ahead of the curve because they have technology. They see things coming much ahead of time, and they. Uh, Acquire either through their own R and D or acquisition technology, which is a technology of future, and as a result of it, they are big beneficiary of uh, the change or shift that happens because of technological disruption, or whom we call generally the disruptor. Yeah, and then their companies, companies who do not adapt to that, will obviously uh, will struggle or fail to survive. Uh, so, idea here is to invest into companies which are disruptors. Yeah. Uh, because we believe that uh, technological shift are very significant that are playing out uh, different technological shift are playing out in different industries and they all playing out simultaneously and as i said covid has increased the adoption of technology 
so for example one classic disruption that's playing out in global automobile market and now uh, at a very nascent stage in india but i think will play out very significantly in india is the ev revolution in auto industry all of you sitting in dubai understand this much better uh, all of us know that by 2000 uh, you know by 2030 i think for my view is 50% of and maybe higher in uh, us europe uh, but globally also 50% of including india india also i think 50% of automobile market will be electric my view by 2050 today the cost of running a ev all of us understand is much lower as it is uh, than that of a, a traditional vehicle the only challenge is uh, uh, the initial purchase price of the vehicle is higher for an electric vehicle versus a traditional gasoline vehicles right but by 2025 26 as volumes ramp up i think we should have a parity in the uh, initial purchase price of a ev vehicle versus a gasoline vehicle and if that be the case and if the cost of running is 1/4 then i think all of us will be driving an ev vehicle i'm sure many of you are still doing that now one ev disruption uh, uh, automobile globally is a trillion dollar industry so one ev disruption uh, is a huge disruption uh, right uh, across the whole value chain because the batteries that go into ev is very different than a gasoline vehicle Uh, 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 the spare parts that go into uh, a EV automobile is very different than that in other vehicles. Uh, EV also means that probably we do, all of us don't have to visit to a gas station to get a car fuel because we'll have a charging point at our home and offices, and the vehicles will get charged either overnight uh, uh, or at our office when we are at work, and which effectively again then means that we have to set up millions and millions of charging points. so and i think companies which will which have this technologies and which align themselves with this new trend will have uh, non linear or super normal growth over the next 15 20 years we have seen what has happened to tesla in the last 5 years right tesla's market cap is higher than despite they sell only they sold 5 lakh vehicles last year and probably they will sell a million this year yet uh, uh, their market cap is higher than the combined market cap of the big 5 in the auto industry uh because they dominate the ev space so i have no doubt in my mind that evs the penetration of evs will accelerate in india as well and we've seen many uh, india because we have high level of pollutions and other issues uh, state governments have already started taking initiatives to drive that for example goa has said uh, in india that by 2026 they want all um all the vehicles in goa to go electric delhi as a state has said that they want all public transportation so private taxis and the ola ubers to go uh, ev by 2026 so i think there will be push from governments also because governments realize and understand that uh, uh, this can solve a lot of problems <laughs> so i see a huge opportunity let's say in the entire ev ecosystem then there is disruptions around uh, uh, shift from fossil fuel to clean energy renewables bit wind or solar that's a huge disruption Uh, technology is driving other disruptions including data centers i think that's a huge opportunity in india uh, we've realized we live in a world where data is very precious and in a world where their geopolitical risks are so high uh, uh, every country wants to have control on its data the reserve bank of india has said that i have now already done a regulation around this we already have a regulation in india where all data relating to financial transactions of indians has to be stored on shore in india and it cannot be stored into a data center into uh singapore melbourne sydney or san francisco uh, which effectively means all global companies will have to set up huge data centers in india now that's a huge opportunity because the data will have to be stored on shore and it has its own technological nuances which means it opens up new set of opportunities for companies which have capabilities and technologies to set up data centers so the point is idea is simple is to invest into companies which have Uh, disruptive technology and which are disruptor this could be companies which could have manufacturing products which are disrupting it or it could be services company also but companies which have technology as an edge or using technology to disrupt the world and we want to invest into some of the leading companies there <laughs> and finally science friends <clears throat> so uh, maybe one data point i want to share with you i'm sure some of you might be aware of it as well unfortunately in india we have not done a great job in marketing our science skills over the last 25 30 years uh in as much as like we produce the highest number of uh, graduates uh, in computer science uh, in the world uh, for the last 25 30 years we've been doing that and we'll continue to do that and as a result of which um, indian it industry is the largest in the world outside of us uh, uh we also produce the highest number of graduates and post graduates in chemistry and biology in india 
but we have not done a good job in marketing our science skills to the world but i think now the time has come for that because in as much as india needs the world the world needs india uh, the fact is india's chemical exports or pharma exports pharma ip exports today are just a fraction of what china does and china doesn't when it comes to science skills india is far ahead of china despite that chinese exports are significantly higher than india uh, because of the manufacturing prowess uh but i think time has come where uh, there is a confluence of events that's happening or playing out where one the world wants to uh, uh, world has realized the geopolitical risks and people want to uh, 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 co- global companies fortune 500 fortune 2000 companies wants to reduce their dependence on china uh, when it comes to sourcing uh, their supply chain they don't today most of them are 100% dependent on china 90% of iphones are manufactured in china yeah and likewise with chemicals pharmas and so many things so global companies want to reduce their dependence on china uh, and at the same time government of india have taken some right steps uh, by incentivizing these companies who want to come and set up manufacturing base in india india now if you set up a new manufacturing base in india india has the lowest income tax rates in the world at 15% for new manufacturing in india and also government of india is incentivizing setting up new manufacturing in india across multiple sectors through a new program which they have launched over the last year called production link incentive so which is to match um, this whole chinese uh, syndrome of you know state level subsidy one of the reasons which chinese meaning apart from everything else why china's manufacturing grew over the last 25 years was china the government and the states or the provinces gave huge amount of subsidies to Uh, uh manufacturing companies to come and set up base so that they can create employment and uh, facilitate the growth of the economy uh, better late than never i think india has learned some lessons from there should have learned much earlier but as i said better late than never and now india is also giving uh incentives for setting up new manufacturing in india but these are linked to production targets and it's a very uh, it's a very large uh, it's now become a very large program of government of india uh so which again incentivizes companies global companies and indian companies to uh, set up new manufacturing in india because you get incentive from government and also you have the lowest tax rates in the world uh, goes without saying that india uh, continues to have the lowest wage rates in the world china is no more cheap when it comes to labor right the cost of labor in china is now 4x of india china is not cheap anymore uh, so india also has the lowest wage rates in the world which effectively means i firmly believe that chemical and pharma exports from india over the next uh, uh 15 20 years will have phenomenal growth uh and i i see very bright prospects for chemical and pharma companies from india so that's in summary friends uh, what we're talking about for the framework uh, that i want to touch upon each of these uh, i think each of these sectors these four sectors i think will have the fastest if you look at the whole indian economy all the 17 sectors i think these four sectors will have the fastest growth in india an idea with this fund is to invest into companies which are, as i said uh leaders in these sectors eventually over a period of time just like apple or amazon was not amongst the top 100 or top 500 companies in us and today they are the largest companies of us and of the world i am of the opinion that some of the companies that may be that may form part of a portfolio today they might not be amongst the largest companies in india but i have no doubt in my mind that probably 10 years out or 15 years out they will become some of the leading companies of india so idea is to invest into these companies at the early stage of the life cycle and to partner with them or participate with them in their growth cycle so that we can participate into the wealth creation that will happen uh, because of that uh, so that's briefly about the fund it's a fund with a duration of 5 uh, uh, year plus 1 year 4 uh, year plus two extensions of 1 year each so effectively it's a 6 year fund uh, uh, there is a exit load uh, for uh, in the second and the third year uh, and you can exit in the fourth year without exit load but i would strongly urge uh, investors to come in the fund with a 5 uh, to 6 year time horizon because when we invest when we are investing in this fund we are investing with that t- kind of a time horizon so uh, it is important that uh, investors should have uh, time, time horizon similar to which is a investment horizon otherwise if there is a mismatch then it might not lead to the best outcomes Uh, other details of the fund are there uh, uh, with bhuvan ji and team and the motilal oswal team pratesh and team they will share with you so i think i'll stop here on this fund and uh, 
uh, and uh, 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 we can open the floor for questions or you want to touch upon something else uh, no so we'll ask question that is better because pankaj ji in your ability and the theme which you have got in bits we fully endorse it uh, being a fund manager in the global space technology and the internet is something which is very important we totally understand the benefit of it just now as we are doing the session my chair is delivered online so even we are discussing on zoom it's an online platform a lot of money is being saved in fact the one more uh, no now it is not the case but one year six months one year back zoom alone was equivalent to all the airlines uh, market cap so your theme is absolutely bang on i let me uh, see so first of all please ask questions friends uh, knowledge is free your time is not for free because if you just use the knowledge and don't implement or, or there is no point uh, listening to the uh, session pankaj ji has been doing good job we have been doing good job mohitlal oswal has been doing good job but it is all about your money so please ask questions we'll just wait for a minute to hear from any one of you please start ask particular questions which will help you to invest and make money with us you can also type on the chat or type on my whatsapp i can ask on your behalf but please ask questions mr pankaj ji morning this is ravi here uh, had a good yeah had a good insights about the brand power and the digital and the tech team um one thing which want to uh, highlight about this is basically the tech teams uh if you look at the multiple the p multiple are very much on the higher side and you have seen the run which has happened in the global it companies as well as the local domestic it companies as well and uh, considering the interest rates going to hike uh, with the you know four or five hikes in this year already the tech companies have already started correcting because of the uh, discounting factor so do you feel is, is this is going to be some sort of a a uh, valuation correction will be there how do you foresee this this sort of a multiple justification for the tech companies sure oh, good question ravi so uh, okay before i answer your question as to what i think and how it will play out let me give you a higher level view on the whole thing so yes think about this think about amazon journey over the last 20 years 2000 to 2020 let's say yeah yeah Twenty-year period, uh, there have been four Fed rate hike cycle which Amazon went through. Right. At every point of time, if let's say anyone was invested in Amazon, they would have thought through that uh, Fed is going to rate hike rates and Amazon stock will fall, and it 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 did fell each of those times, mm. right? But Amazon kept on growing its business. Anyone who held through it was still better off because the stock did well over a period of time. Right. So all I'm trying to say is this Fed rate hikes and rate. Uh, cuts are cyclical things which uh, which which are like short term cycles of 18 months 24 months and so on and so forth right uh, and you are right that we are at uh, today as we talk we are at one such point where fed is about to hike rates and as a result of which which is having a gravitational pull on uh, all high p companies globally including the tech companies because they are the highest p so i take that point uh, but i'm saying as investors when we invest we'll have to take we'll have to think through multiple cycles mm. uh, first of all when we select businesses and then if we think about that and if we think a business can grow irrespective of fed rate hike cycles which amazon keep kept on doing or i'm just using amazon as a proxy because it's a well known name and i can we can i can give you 50 other names and i'm sure you know many other names so mm. we have to invest in those kind of businesses first of all yeah mm. now the second point then is how do we deal with this short term phenomena when i say short term anything which is 12 months 18 months from my point of view is short term because we are talking about this fund itself is a six years fund which is a fairly uh, decent period of time probably okay. by the time we end the fund uh, you know fed would have done with its rate hike and they probably would have done with another cycle of rate cuts as well who knows right mm -hmm. we would have had at least one full cycle at least right uh, mm -hmm. so i'm just saying uh, so uh, we are conscious of the fact that in the short term let's say over the next 12 18 months uh, some of these companies will have headwinds where valuations will compress and so on and so mm -hmm. forth which is why we will have to be careful in selecting the right kind of companies and companies which we are comfortable uh, uh, one thing we are doing to mitigate this short term risk apart from our company selection which has to be more nuanced and more careful is also we are investing money in a staggered fashion in this fund so we are not taking the whole money up front we are uh, calling money in staggered fashion over a period of 
uh, in three or four installments over a period of six to nine months to tide over short-term volatility. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, I understand that there will be some short-term volatility that can happen. Stocks, stocks are already down. A lot of these tech stocks are down 20, 30 percent. Uh, 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 meaning they can fall another 10, 20 percent or whatever that that happens. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll be slightly more careful one in the stock selection. Secondly, when it comes to this tech, which is why we have a broad-based fund where this whole mm -hmm. internet of tech is only 25 percent of a fund, right? Mm, okay. so if you don't find the right companies, uh, mm. there's no compulsion on our part to invest into internet companies because it's a fund which stands on four pillars. Mm. So we cannot invest, we can choose not to invest in one particular sector because we don't find any good companies at reasonable valuation there. And we can invest mm. into other sectors, other themes, right? I think so. Yeah. So mm. that's a fine balance we'll have to strike in terms of making sure that we find right companies in each sector. And if mm -hmm. you don't find a right company in each sector, we'll rather uh, not invest in that sector and we'll invest in opportunities in other sectors as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I still mm -hmm. believe, uh, despite Fed rate hike cycle and all that, where valuation mm -hmm. is challenge, India's internet sector and companies will grow at 30%, 25-30% of the next mm -hmm. year. So in a mm -hmm. sector that is growing at 25-30%, there is no way you will not find opportunities, you know? Mm, not yeah, every yeah. company will succeed see the point is for every one amazon which succeeds uh, you know all of us don't realize yeah i'm sure we know for every one amazon which succeeds there are 99 who fail mm, but the right. failures are not well known because they're not published and people don't remember them right mm. so uh, we'll have to find those uh, right companies which will succeed in the long term if we can do that then i think the fed rate hikes and all of that these are all transitory issues over you know cyclical issues over 12 18 months they'll take care of themselves Hmm. I agree with you. The choice of companies is, is, is going to be the key because you have seen the valuation of Zomato or Paytm. They've taken it to the heights and then we have seen what has happened after the listing. So, so on some of these companies, let's say also we, obviously we, uh, uh, we do very, meaning our team puts in a lot of efforts, uh, hmm. shared with you some of our performance numbers. Uh, hmm. I'm sure you'll appreciate see performance. It takes a lot of hard work and uh, burning midnight oil to get those kind of performance. And I'm very lucky we have a very great team. So okay. obviously our teams put in a lot of hard work in terms of uh, uh, whatever research they do and all of that. And it's a very intense job, very yes. intense job. Hmm. It's a job which some of my analysts like they work like uh, they work like 12 hours a day and six days a week. They put 70, hmm. 80 hours a week and they do it week after week for the whole year, you know, and they do it year after year. Um, that's the kind of stuff these uh, guys are. And we're privileged, I'm privileged to have some of the best analysts in India as part of my team. So uh, some of these businesses, we have a strategic negative view for whatever reasons. So irrespective of the stock price, we might just not choose to invest in them. For example, when you touch upon Paytm, for example, uh, we have a negative view on Paytm. So it doesn't matter what price it will be. We don't intend to invest into that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and likewise, uh, the other names you mentioned, Zomato, the Zomato and all the loss making companies. Yeah, yeah. My analyst has a target price of twenty five on Zomato. So if it mm. already gets to twenty five, probably we look forward to buy it. Mm. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Pankaj. So we have a question in chat box from Gulshan. Uh, is asking for the uh, ticket size and can we invest the money into a tranches? So yes, friends, we can uh, invest money into a tranches like last one. We have kept it one simple option also this time. Uh, we can start a SIP of uh, X amount, okay? The minimum ticket size from the design designated by the CB is 1 crore as we did last year, la like last fund also. So if somebody want to go for a 2 crore, 3 crore, then the 10% of the fund for uh, your commitment upon we, commitment amount, we can take an inner SIP route for next 10 months and we can build a portfolio. Second route is we can give a 25% of the commitment amount right now and remaining we will call in next 8 to 9 months. Okay, as and as the we will think our prices are arrived where we can put the money. So we'll call the money accordingly. And the last option is you can give entire commitment amount at one go also as last time many of the investors has given. So these are the three routes to come in. Again, I would like to repeat, whatever the commit, commitment amount you will give, 10% of the debt, uh, you can subscribe as an SIP, Systematic Investment Plan for a 10 months. So we will deploy money accordingly. Second, uh, you can give a 25% of the, your commitment amount right now. And remaining, you can give me over the period of next nine to 10 months as anyway, we will call. We'll give you 15 working days time to deploy that money to us. 
and the last one is you can give entire corpus at one go i hope gulshan i answer your query won't you anything uh, yes, else sir. you would like to sure. add thank you no no sir please yeah from my side okay thank you sir thank you when you are on mute one very important when very very question comes in see lot of people want to invest on their own and like ravi asked something about the private price to earning just to tell you one one thing just to share with everybody one company we were so bullish and we had to sell it yesterday in our portfolio in the global market so it's an ongoing concern company is an ongoing concern so people who are investing on their own do you want to tell them not to do it what is your suggestion for people who are who think that they can just get a suggestion from somebody to buy a share and they're buying that share uh, i'm sure you meet a lot of people who just want to pick share from your presentation or maybe they want to ask you acha okay okay you'll invest in these shares and then you never hear from them what do you what do you want to say about that very important thing basically, basically zomato and uh, paytm and all they should actually not not investable when they were in ipo it's like a scam a retail investor want to get in a scam so what's your your suggestion what is your message to all those people who want to invest on their own and they don't have knowledge of the equity market i'll give you a simple story dekhiye simple narrative i would say not story narrative uh, when we fall sick we go to a doctor we don't call a friend and ask ki bhai mere pet mein dard hai kya dawai le and wo bata bhi dega aap log nahi because you don't want to risk your health right matlab right. उसने पेट दर्द के बदले लूज मोशन की दवाई बता दी तो गड़बड़ हो जाएगा राइट एंड प्लस द प्रॉब्लम इज कि ऑल ऑफ़ आर बायोलॉजिकली डिफरेंट सो व्हाट मेडिसिन विल सूट मी माय बायोलॉजी विल नॉट सूट यू दो यू आल्सो हैव फीवर आई आल्सो हैव फीवर बट डॉक्टर माइट स्टिल प्रिस्क्राइब डिफरेंट मेडिसिन टू बोथ ऑफ अस बिकॉज वी आर बायोलॉजिकली वायर डिफरेंटली and everything else so friends uh, our health is very important and all of us take due care of our health the next thing that is important for all of us after our health is our wealth so my sincere advice is to avoid free advising when it comes to managing your wealth meaning there is nothing wrong with diy see you can do diy with your health also if you fall sick simple do a google and you get list of medicines on google कोई जरूरत ही नहीं है फीवर हंड्रेड हंड्रेड एंड टू डिग्री टेम्परेचर यूल गेट मेडिसिन स्टमक एक बॉडी एक शोल्डर एक फ्रोजन शोल्डर यू पुट ऑन गूगल यू गेट मेडिसिन बट येट वी कंसल्ट स्पेशलिस्ट बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट डोट वॉन्ट टू रिस्क आर हेल्थ ऑल एंड टू से इज योर वेल्थ इज इक्वली इंपॉर्टेंट सो डोंट रिस्क योर वेल्थ कंसल्ट एन एडवाइजर एंड कंसल्ट एन एडवाइजर हुम यू ट्रस्ट जस्ट लाइक यू ट्रस्ट योर डॉक्टर once you trust your doctor you don't go to a second doctor to take a second opinion unless it's a very severe case or something like that right likewise trust uh, have an advisor and have an advisor whom so where you trust because his advice you are going to follow and once you follow someone's advice his advice is going to have a impact on your health when it comes to doctor and adv- financial advice on your wealth so always go to an advisor whom you trust um, and follow his advice because today the world has become complex financial markets are extremely complex and everything or anything that happens in the world has a direct bearing on financial market the classic example is what we saw the last three days right the first sign of uh, russian attack on ukraine markets crashed over the next two days they've just bounced back again because people have realized that it's not as bad as it did uh so uh, so it becomes very confusing at times uh because uh, it's even difficult i'm just saying that even for professionals like us it's a extreme challenge right because we put in 10 12 hours every day when i say me meaning i'm sure everyone else who's doing that be it bhuvan ji or anyone else who's doing that they're putting 10 12 hours every day to study mm-hmm. research and do all of that so if you can devote that kind of a time aisa nahi ki aap nahi kar sakte aap ekdam kar sakte main mana nahi kar raha hu aur main bol raha hu aap kijiye it's good you do it because more and more people become financially literate that will be very good uh, for the society and for the world but the only thing i'm trying to say is uh, 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 give 
give your time before you give your money sure so spend that 10 10 hours whatever time to do research and after that you do aap uh, investing kijiye koi problem nahi and ek bar invest karne ke baad mein usko track kijiye uh, which is what professionals do so as long as you can do it please go ahead and do it if you can't do it then don't take chances with your wealth basis someone's advice you don't take chances with your health uh you will never take that or none of us do ever take that likewise treat your wealth also equally important because financial health is as important as uh you know physical health because financial health decides everything else for us right so uh, please 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 respect your financial health if i may add pankaj ji just to add here uh, that it's very important that you we pankaj ji and mohitlal oswal and we are here to make your money 10 times to 100 times here that is the whole idea the idea is to start making you think in x not in percentage what have, very commonly say, seen is that for property we invest a million dollar for equity we want to start with 10000 dollar and that is one attitude i think there is no point then coming to equity either come into equity with a, uh, a lot of understanding else we will come with lot of money and low, no experience and earn lot of experience and no money so please take it sincerely this is one of the best way of creating wealth so now pankaj ji last question i think from my side on the investor behalf let's again wait for 30, 30 seconds if somebody has a question friends do you want to ask question please go ahead okay so pankaj ji last question people have this mindset of aif has a illiquidity issue people want to go through the fund route pms route etc uh we have tried even motlal oswal also tried like pateji tried with us and we are opening an a pms and nri has a big headache of pms you know that what is your suggestion why do you think aif is better why do you think pms is better i know for as a fund manager for you everything is fine for example you also run the advisory business and suddenly people start feeling that advisory hi nahi ho rahi hai because people want to do timing over there and it is impossible to time it in november market fell so again somebody should call them then again market fell now in january it is it fall and overall it's a five year journey so the one thing which you have stressed today is six years i don't know why we all want returns every year we all want to see that my 100 has become 120 every year so how do you tackle that mindset and what do you want to tell these people uh, about the aif versus the funds the the liquid funds mutual funds sure so friends uh, do question woh jo aapne puche hain about one activity level and second is aif versus pm see activity level is very simple uh, the biggest activity to do as a investor just think about it when you are an investor you are owner of a business so if you are shareholder of apple you are owner of apple theek hai na india mein hum log wo ek indian all of you i am presuming all of you are indians or have roots in india so wo ek hum hindi mein bolte hain na india mein ek wo mindset hai कि सेठ लोग काम नहीं करते हैं है ना तो अब ये आप ओनर हो तो आपको काम करने की जरूरत नहीं है सो ऑल एम टू से इफ यू आर ओनर ऑफ एप्पल देन लेट द एप्पल सीईओ, एप्पल मैनेजमेंट एप्पल एम्प्लॉज वर्क फॉर यू एंड इफ दे आर डूइंग अ गुड जॉब द ओनली थिंग यू हैव टू डू इज नॉट डू एनी कुछ नहीं करना सबसे बड़ा काम है बिकॉज दैट इज मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट इफ आई मीनिंग इफ आई टेल एनी ऑफ यू आई थ्रो अ चैलेंज टू एनी ऑफ यू की यू प्लीज स्टे अवे फ्रॉम योर फोन फॉर वन सिंगल डे how many of us will be able to do that very difficult kuch nahi karna is very difficult so the point i want to say is ki once we are invested into a good company let's say i'm just saying again go back to the same example of apple or amazon or a hdfc bank let's say indian example baat karte hain global bahut ho hdfc bank kisi ne 2000 mein hdfc bank le liya uh, in 20 years there have been eight occasions when hdfc bank stock has fallen 30% okay eight bar aisa hua hai last 20 years mein jab stock has fallen 30% from the peak The smartest investor was जिसने कुछ नहीं किया जो खाली ट्वेंटी ईयर से लेके बैठा था बिकॉज जिसने कभी बेच दिया एच डी सी बैंक वो फिर बाद में दोबारा ले ही नहीं पाए उनका मिस हो गया स्टॉक ठीक है ना तो एक बार शॉर्ट टर्म के लिए लगा कि जब वो ट्वेंटी परसेंट करेक्ट हुआ किसी ने बेच दिया तो शॉर्ट टर्म के लिए लगा उसके बाद और टेन परसेंट करेक्ट हुआ तो लगा यार वो स्मार्ट है उसने बेच दिया मैं तो रह गया है ना हम तो एक दूसरे से कंपेयर करते हैं ना पड़ोसी ने ज्यादा पैसे बना लिए तो ऑल ऑफ गेट Uh, मतलब अरे कि माय पड़ोसी माय नेबर इज स्मार्टर देन मी सो वी ऑल कंसर्न अबाउट हाउ मच नॉट ओनली हाउ मच मनी वी आर मेकिंग 
we are not concerned about neighbor's health okay we are not concerned whether he is happy or not but we are concerned whether he is making more money than me or not uh, <laughs> so it looks that he turned out smarter ki wo hdfc bank fell 20% he sold out i did not sell and uske baad it fell another 20% to us samay to ek bar ke liye laga ki yaar my neighbor is smarter than me but we don't realize after that ki after 2 years he could not buy it again and i was holding it and after 2 years the stock was 100% higher the stock doubled in the next 2 years after that so he missed out so i am saying when you buying a good company once you bought good company all you have to do as long as the company is doing well so we have to keep researching it keep tracking their performance if are they continuing to do good work or not and if they continue to do good work then all we have to do is do nothing just sit back and relax and enjoy life because we are a owner of a company which is doing very well okay then why why unnecessarily wo kya kehte hain don't try to fix something which is not spoiled right so the company is doing well then why try to uh, uh, do anything with your portfolio the most successful investors in the world have this uh, one unique quality which is very which is very simple to say and very difficult to practice is uh, their activity level is very low वो साल में एक या दो ही ट्रांजेक्शन करते हैं एक या दो इन्वेस्टमेंट करते हैं और फिर वो बैठे रहते हैं एंड दे कीप वेटिंग गेम ऑफ पेशेंस एंड अनफॉर्चुनेटली पेशेंस इज अ वेरी रेयर कमोडिटी सो दैट्स वन सेकेंडली ऑन द टू यूर आंसर टू योर क्वेश्चन भुवन जी ऑन पी एम एस वर्सेज ए आई <laughs> no i think it's a wrong conception that afs are illiquid uh, it depends on what kind of fund you create right are afs at the fund level they are very liquid because we invest in large cap companies now with this particular fund or the previous fund <coughs> no no that's not the question pankaj ji the question is that i am a businessman and equity is my second preference first is my business and then let's say family issues i gave 5 crore to aif it is let's say at 4 crore valuation right now i need the money in uh-huh. the pms i can withdraw the money immediately that is the question that is how the big investors are are feeling right now sure i'll answer that so two things friends what happens is see on aif platform what we are doing is we are creating thematic funds so our first fund had a particular theme uh, this fund has a particular theme now i believe uh, that you have to give that adequate time for the theme to play out so for that returns to happen if we do not give that adequate time then uh, those desired returns will not happen and investors at the end of the day might say ki bhai aapne jab fund launch kiya tab to bola tha ki bhai x percentage returns aayenge but for that to happen one has to stay invested for a theme i'll give an example just think about it tesla ye elon ne 2009 mein shuru kiya tha company matlab uski foundation 2009 mein lagayi thi right abhi 2015 tak लोग क्वेश्चन कर रहे टेस्ला विल सरवाइव और नॉट सरवाइव और अब वी हैव सीन लास्ट तीन साल में व्हाट हैज हैपेंड टू टेस्ला स्टॉक प्राइस एंड ऑल दैट दिस कंपनी इन द वर्ल्ड सो यू हैव टू स्टे इन्वेस्टेड इन दैट कंपनी ओके सो हम हम लोग जान मुझे क्लोज एंडेड स्ट्रक्चर में इसलिए करते हैं कि इन्वेस्टर आपके पास वो ही पैसा आप लगाइए जो 3 साल 5 साल 6 साल का होराइजन है बिकॉज़ उस इन्वेस्टर इन्वेस्टमेंट में आपको सही रिटर्न मिलना बहुत जरूरी है हर एक फंड में वी हैव आवर ओन मनी आल्सो इन द फंड या so it is important to have the right time horizon you can select a good company but if your time horizon is not good you might still not make money amazon stock fell 90% in 2001 in technology meltdown okay someone had to stay with amazon for 10 years to make it 10 bagger or 100 bagger if you don't stay with a company for 5 year 10 year then how do you make those kind of returns because at the end of the day you make money as a shareholder Uh, when the stock price is rises stock price is rises when the underlying business grows business grows when revenue grows profits grow these are businesses ye uh, matlab koi ye to hai nahi ki jadoo ka danda hai ghumaya aur overnight business khada ho gaya business build karne mein 5 saal 10 saal 15 saal lagte hain so as a investor also we have to give that time if we do not give that time we will be compromising our own returns uh, you know to wo ek sahi time horizon hona bahut zaruri hai secondly yet we have an we don't do it but i'm uh, i'm just sharing with you bhuvan ji now recently we have tied up with bajaj finance in india okay so customers if just in case they need provisional liquidity and all that 
so if they want to pledge their units of aif and uh, take drawing power against that bajaj finance is willing to give that i don't encourage these kind of things but we have received a lot of requests from a lot of customers like this so we then said that we'll introduce them to bajaj finance where <laughs> they can do that just in case they want but my suggestion is mai khud leverage karta nahi hu life mein my yes. suggestion is that invest with a 5 6 man whatever the time horizon of the fund is and my uh, we do a fund with a particular time horizon which is good for that fund our first fund uh abhi three and a half years ho gaye we did it with a five year time horizon we did it at a time when the indian economy was in a really bad shape sab kuch kharab ho raha tha economy mein to ab agar economy ko sudharna hai maine bola 5 saal ka samay dena hoga kuch bhi overnight nahi hoga uh, thankfully economy is doing well now after a gap of 3 years only but uh, you have to give that time and a very good point you have taken so i just want to on ask on the bajaj finance thing nris are allowed I will check that, and I think it should be. Yeah. But I'll check that and specifically come back to you. It's just an option, objection overcoming that yeah, yeah. money is available. If you, if a client understand, and up to fifty percent only will they will give, I believe. Yeah, so, they will give whatever haircut. Ke saath. Ah, ah, ah. So, bus, we. It, it's a very good point, in fact, and I understand India is now becoming America, and we should not use this option. But yeah. okay, I think uh, we have taken a lot of time of your Pankaji. Uh, guys, last one minute. If you want to ask questions, please. I'm encouraging the asking of a question. i encourage you to invest in equities that is the one of the most important and, and seems to be an only way to make money from here where you can relax have a lot of time for your your sports your family and you can still become uh, at least a millionaire in next 10 15 years please ask questions if you have else we'll just end the session by thanking pankaj ji so i i just strongly commend uh, what bhuvan ji is saying all of us generally believe that equity is risk right i think that's a general perception but friends let me tell you one thing not investing into equities is a bigger risk than investing into equities because if you invest into equity the risk is in the short term let's say uh, world war happens cold war happens russia ukraine happens your investment can fall by 10 15% but i can assure you over a period of 2 uh, year 3 year you will make healthy returns yeah but if you do not invest into equity anywhere else you invest your money will not be able to generate returns which will be even to beat inflation and especially in this kind of a world environment where interest rates are real rates are negative all over the world there is no alternate to equities so remember not investing into equity is a much bigger risk than investing into equity absolutely the biggest risk is of you know cash is trash that's a red alert says i always the cash is trash so one very important thing also can you become uh, mukesh ambani probably not and if you can't become mukesh ambani become his partner that's the best way to look at the equity so i think uh, people don't have question this point of time uh, pankaj ji we'll start with the sales meetings from tomorrow i i am seeing a lot of metal in this pradesh ji i've already informed you while while the session was going on so there is straight forward things that you have performed we have performed so we tell the client performance is there you should understand and take it if you are keen so i think in your case pradesh will deal with our team tomorrow and then yes. okay so right now a lot of people don't have questions but i'm sure in one to one meeting when they want to invest yes. the, they will come forward anything on the macro you want to say about this ukraine war do you see it is spilling over to china and taiwan what is your view that all that happens what history says actually whatever is happening in the world uh, there is no precedence to that i think uh, one thing is very clear now after this uh, russia event day for yesterday and the, how the world has responded uh, and it uh, to me to my mind it's somewhat saddening i think the world order will change in the next 15 20 years or my view is that it's a clear example it's a clear demonstration on our face that the world order has already changed is already changed. i think it's a very unfortunate thing to happen where uh, uh countries see russia and china are not ruled by one party hmm they ruled by one person Right. Yeah. Now Putin, meaning he is supposed to go in election in two thousand twenty-five, which also he'll not do it because he's passed a resolution there, which extends his term, and he's going to be around till two thousand thirty-six. Anarchy. Yeah. Yeah. So two thousand thirty-six. Hmm. There was a poll which was conducted in Russia, uh, uh, which was taking the opinion of Russian people on uh, this whole uh, event of Russia attacking U- Ukraine. Hmm. and only 7% of russians hmm. are in favor of this hmm. 
So just Obviously. imagine, ninety-three percent of Russians do not support this. Yes, yes, I agree. I met somebody yesterday, and he was telling the same thing. Yeah, Russian. Ninety-three percent Russians don't support this, but they don't have a choice. Yes, and it's not a democracy in a country like India. If a government does something which is not supported by ninety percent of the people, that person will be thrown out of office. Absolutely, absolutely. And unfortunately, now these two gentlemen who do not have support of their people. uh are going to have a very dominant role in the world true so it's a very meaning all of us know that this whole thing is fizzled out because they are already into the capital city of kiev so i think in the next 48 hours if i have not seen tv today since morning but i think in the next 48 hours uh, there will be a truce or there will be a ceasefire yes, uh if it has not already happened it will certainly happen but i think it's a very unfortunate thing it has a very profound implication for the world over the next 20 years i think we don't have to ask anyone the world order has already changed it's a lame duck uh, unfortunately the democracies or the large democracies of the world have shown that they are lame ducks and it has some very significant bearings for the world going forward uh so let's see how it plays out but i don't think so it bodes good for the world for peace security and for democracy true you know so uh, but i don't think so we have a choice with that so no, no, we have to live with it and i'm sure the positive side is that every country will start <laughs> ramping up their own industries so that is also a good sign yeah. right. okay thank you pankaj ji thank you pritesh ji thanks for all of you for joining in and uh, thanks for your time and i hope we learn a lot from investing and we understand that we have no other option but to invest have a great day thank you thank you all friends and thank you what you say, uh, thank you only thank you gul gul sir aapne ji you want me to stay no i think we the, the discussion is over pritesh ji let's start the business yeah yeah Aap thank you want to say something i'm here tell me no so, nothing you said uh, something on messenger so i said uh, if you want to uh, so to just just see uh, you must be having the registration data right now from yeah. that you, you look into it i have a lot of existing clients of ours so gautam will send an email politely to one each one by one and if they they have the money and they want to invest uh, you go ahead and do one to one and understand what their objections are the office boy will go and get the documentation straight forward yeah. business that they want to make money they should come forward how much we we, we so any don't be in selling uh, i think we had a 6 7 investors last year who invested in 2017 and the money's yeah. are already been doubled we should uh, at least uh, uh, go and discuss with them okay at this uh, uh, i i can't see the name of mr narayan okay who are the one of the first investor we had i think must be stuck into some meeting and all but no problem we can uh, so he is traveling uh, right now he politely uh, conveyed uh, he has told me to convey regards to you guys and 24th march he will be available so yes. gautam will just check it and he is a very responsive person and if you have made money why will he not give you more money so i'm that's why i said no i did not I very simple thing I to, told I came back to the liquidity thing and all I didn't did not discuss the strategy I in fact told already one of my investors that you have to invest and they must invest it is their money they'll understand property is not the uh, game uh, anymore which they can play because uh, it's a com- it's a big time commodity and uh, when you buy from a developer it is already inflated price so, so what let's get to the work you, hmm? you are giving at this eight percent offering to government obviously वो तो गिनते नहीं ना लोग एनीवे बहुत लंबा डिस्कशन है प्रदेश जी वो हम लोग रोज ही कर रहे हैं आपको तो पता है आप तो कब से कर रहे हैं इनफैक्ट रिमेम्बर रामदेव जी सेड दैट वन परसेंट टोल्ड रामदेव जी दैट व्हाई डोंट यू स्टॉप द इक्विटी इनफ्लो इन टॉप टेक द मनी इन द बॉटम एंड नाउ टू दिस बॉटम एंड आई नो हाउ मच एफर्ट वी हैव टू टेल एवरीबडी दिस इज द बॉटम गिव मनी नाउ व्हेन इट इज 10 दे आर वेटिंग फॉर 8 And thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, absolutely right. One is alternate. My view today is suppose we look at this bits as in front. Okay, so mm-hmm. if you look at Ramdev ji's wealth creation study which he did this year, the fortunately that name is also bits. Asa is it? <laughs> And the abbreviation is same. So, but we filed the papers in March 2021. Okay, so he must have started the thinking about this wealth creation study as six eight nine month back. So uh, what he is talking about, I'll send you the soft copy of that. I wish you can read that, and it is for our investors. It is easily available on Motilal Oswal MF dot com website. Go to a download yeah. section. You can download the copy. Yeah. What he is talking about the new age businesses and what going uh, uh, from here for next ten twenty years, what will work in India? So the business is not moving to a digital. The one simple liner. 
the businesses which are not moving to a digital from a digital will not survive they absolutely. will be out of business absolutely no doubt yeah so it's a very good uh, uh, study but employee kaam karenge na just to rep 9 to 6 aap bologe employee ko office aane ke liye aayega hi nahi jo knowledge worker hai wo bolega bhai main aapko deliver kar raha hu na mujhe aapko jhajuri nahi karni hai ab pushpa movie dekh li sabne to aur nahi hone wala to भाई आपको टैलेंट चाहिए तो आप काम करवाइए ना टैलेंट काम करेगा और अनबाटी उनको भाई ई सॉफ्ट विल बी वेरी कॉमन ट्रू ट्रू वेरी ट्रू वेरी ट्रू बिल्कुल तो देखो सर सारे सारे क्लाइंट को भी समझ में आ रहा है कि दुकान से कॉर्पोरेट में जा रहे हैं वो खुद भी एंड दे ऑल डेंटिस्ट्स आर फेसिंग दिस इश्यूज ऑफ एक्सपेंशन बिकॉज़ कल का जो बड़ा ब्रांड था लाइक लेट्स से एग्जांपल लेते हैं बीकानेर वाले का या हल्दीराम का वो आज छोटे हो गए दैट्स ऑल द एक्सपेंशन इज हैपनिंग इन द इंडिया सो मार्केट शेयर अ गेम है जोमेटो को कितनी भी गाली बको बट जोमेटो के बिना तीन दिन में काम चलता नहीं है नहीं चलता है ना रेस्टोरेंट बगल में हुआ जोमेटो से ऑर्डर करना पड़ता है बिकॉज रेस्टोरेंट को फोन लगाओ फिर वो समझेगा नहीं ऑर्डर फिर कहाँ लोकेशन है तो जोमेटो हैज अ बिजनेस सेंस ऑब्वियसली फॉर वैल्यूशन यू नीड एक्सपर्ट हेल्प तो आप जोमेटो आईपीओ में खरीदोगे तो रोगे बैठ के मतलब इसको ये स्टोरी अच्छी है लेकिन स्टोरी को क्या भाव पे खरीदना है वही तो बात है सर आपको दुबई आना है तो आप दो लाख दरम दो लाख रुपए देके आओगे या आप पचास हजार रुपए देके आओगे भाई आपको वो समझना पड़ेगा जब आप वो नहीं समझ सकते हो तो फिर आप बोलो यार मैं तो आया था दुबई बट बहुत महंगा पड़ा और वही आदमी भी पच्चीस हजार रुपए में तीस हजार रुपए में आएगा तो बोल गया दुबई वॉज वेरी नाइस रामदेव जी ने एक बहुत अच्छा चीज बोला था लास्ट वीक में हम लोग साथ में थे तो एक इन्वेस्टर ने जोमेटो पे क्वेश्चन पूछा था वेरी गुड थिंग विच आई थिंक एवरीबडी विल अग्री विद दिस इसे दो ऐप है आपके मोबाइल में या तो स्विगी है या तो जोमेटो है ठीक है अब ये दोनों को आपकी आदत पड़ गई है आपको उनकी आदत पड़ गई कि कौन सा रेस्टोरेंट कहाँ से मिलता है क्या डिस्काउंट कहाँ पे मिलता है यू अंडरस्टैंड एंड यू ऑर्डर इट और आपको वो प्रैक्टिस है कि आधे एक घंटे में वो बोलते हैं मतलब आ जाता है दिल तो डिले इन टूट अगर तीसरे कोई प्लेयर को आना है मतलब उसका वैल्यूएशन क्या है प्राइस अलग है वो जाने दो आप ये दो ही प्लेयर है अगर कोई तीसरे प्लेयर को आना है ना अगर और अगर आपके मोबाइल में उसको जगह बनानी है तो उसको मेरे ख्याल से बोलते हैं दो तीन महीने खाना ही फ्री देना पड़ेगा बिल्कुल तभी वो आपके मोबाइल में आ पाएगा इतना लॉस बेर करने की ताकत आज किसी में नहीं है नहीं है ड्यूपोली मार्केट है सही कह रहे तो ये क्या है ना एक प्लेटफॉर्म बन गया है उसके छह छह सात सात करोड़ यूजर्स हैं तो ये यूजर्स वापस आपके ऐप पे आने और ऐसा ऐप बनाना रेस्टोरेंट को भी ज्यादा कमीशन देना और आपको फ्री में खाना खिलाना तो ये बहुत ईजी टास्क नहीं है ये धंधा कभी वाइबल नहीं हो पाएगा तीसरे प्लेयर के लिए अब एक चीज स्टडी ये भी है इसके अंदर कि आप अगर खुद जाके रेस्टोरेंट से लो और अगर आप खुद आप अगर आप स्विगी जोमेटो से ऑर्डर करते हो तो द क्वांटिटी ऑफ द फूड इज डिफरेंट इज इट या साढ़े सात सौ एम का पनीर टिका मसाला अगर आप मंगाते हो कोई रेस्टोरेंट से तो वो आपको साढ़े सात सौ एम देगा डायरेक्ट और वही आप जोमेटो से मंगाओ तो साढ़े छह सौ एम एल आता है क्योंकि वो चालीस टका जोमेटो लेके जाता है अच्छा तो गलत है तो जोमेटो उसको बैन कर देगा क्यों बैन करेगा सर पब्लिक को फ्री लगता है ना वो क्या वो दिखाता है डेढ़ रुपया समझो ये चार्ज टू फिफ्टी रुपीज वो लगाता है दो सौ रुपया वो आपको दिखाता है फिफ्टी रुपीज डिस्काउंट एंड यू बाई इट ओके एक्चुअली रेस्टोरेंट में वो सब्जी एक सौ अस्सी रुपए का होता है ओके सो दे आर मेंटेन मनी लेकिन क्या है ना ठीक है ठीक है पहले क्या किया भुवन जी ने क्या किया समझो भुवन जी जमेट हो तो भुवन जी ने क्या किया पहले बिलियन ऑफ डॉलर लगा दिए धंधे के अंदर प्रॉफिट आने को टाइम लगेगा ना ऑब्वियसली अब क्या हो गया अभी आप भुवन जी के क्लाइंट्स को भुवन जी की आदत लग गई है अब जो भुवन जी भाव बोलेंगे उसमें खरीदेंगे लेकिन जो खड्डे खुदे हैं वो कस्टमर लाने के लिए वो जब भरेंगे ना तभी अमेजोन वैसा प्रॉफिट आएगा इस सही बात है तो अपने वो खड्डा कितना गहरा है नहीं पता है इसलिए प्राइस की वेट करेंगे और पैसे लगाएंगे लेकिन पैसे लगाने जरूर है मार्केट वॉट इज जोमेटो स्विगी क्या करते हैं नहीं बट आई थिंक बिजनेस मॉडल सॉलिड है और इफ द प्लेयर इज ऑनली टू और थ्री देन मनी विल बी मेड एंड आई थिंक इन्वेस्टर्स भी कॉमन है जो लार्ज इन्वेस्टर्स दोनों के अंदर कॉमन है शायद कॉमन है कॉमन है तो दो में से एक जैसे हमारे यहाँ क्या हुआ हमारे यहाँ तालाबाद था उबर था और हमारे यहाँ जोमेटो था अभी इनके जो प्राइम जो एंकर इन्वेस्टर थे वो बोले यार तुम दोनों आपस में लड़ रहे नुकसान तो मेरा हो रहा है तो एक ने को खरीद लिया अभी ऐप तीन है जोमेटो को वॉट उबर इट्स वेरी स्मार्टली उबर इट्स ने क्या किया यहाँ पे इंडिया में जोमेटो में मर जाओगे अपना कंपनी वो शेयर होटल बनेगा जोमेटो वो कमाएगा बैठ के स्मार्ट बेचा नहीं बीच में मैं शेयर होटल बन गया बिल्कुल सिंगापुर में ग्रैब ने ले लिया 
तो ये तो बिल्कुल मोनोपोली बिजनेस हो गया है मोनोपोली हो गई है बेस्ट बिजनेस है ये और जहाँ पे जहाँ पे रेस्टोरेंट मर मर के बेचारे पैसा कमाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं वहाँ ये रेस्टोरेंट का बाप बन चुका है बाप बन चुका है वही सुपर मार्केट में होगा धीरे से हो रहा है इनफैक्ट आपके यहाँ तो अपने शुरुआत हो चुका है सर डिमांड है प्लेयर ही कितने देखो बिग बाजार आउटी है बच्चा कौन रिलायंस फ्रेश और डिमांड कोई है ही नहीं तीसरा है ही नहीं कहा जाओगे तीसरा नहीं है तो कौन सा ऑनलाइन बिग बिग बास्केट बास्केट आ आ रहा रहा है है क्या जाएगा लग रहा है। बिग बास्केट तो ऑनलाइन है ये सब ऑनलाइन वाले जो ग्रोफर्स है ये भी ग्रोफर्स भी खरीद लिए हैं ओके तो ये तो क्या वैल्यूएशन की गेम है सब बिकेंगे कोई टिकने नहीं वाला है और किसी को टिकना भी नहीं है आपकी कंपनी क्लाइंट फॉर्स एशिया हजार करोड़ की बना दो बेच दो खत्म करो दूसरे धंधे में आ जाओ वो हजार करोड़ में जितने लिया वो फोड़ेगा अभी क्या करने के सही बात है सामने तो ये इसमें क्या है जो यंग प्लेयर्स जो नए आ रहे हैं वो वैल्यूएशन गेम के लिए आ रहे हैं लेकिन जो ट्रेडिशनल प्लेयर्स है जैसे टाटा है रिलायंस है कमानी जी बैठे हुए हैं वो लोग लंबे समय के लिए बैठे हुए उन लोगों को दस हजार करोड़ में कोई मजा ही नहीं है दे वॉन्ट टू बिलियन डॉलर बहुत बड़ा बनाना गवर्नमेंट बना ये जो नए आ रहे हैं उन लोगों का सौ दो सौ करोड़ मिल गया कभी देखे ही नहीं करोड़ रुपए दो सौ तीन सौ करोड़ मिले बोले लेके भाई बैठ जाओ दूसरा धंधा करेंगे क्या करें तो देर दे आर नॉट इन दैट गेम चाहे आप पेटीएम के ओनर ले लो चाहे फोन पे के ओनर ले लो चाहे आप रोफर्स पकड़ लो चाहे आप ओला ऊपर पकड़ लो ये सबका विजन वो एक लाख करोड़ पांच लाख करोड़ का नहीं है इनको खरीद के लाख पांच लाख करोड़ अपने जो पुराने इन्वेस्टर्स है इंडिया के पायनर्स वही बनाएंगे पैसे सही बात बाकी ये तो हजार दो हजार करोड़ भी बहुत हो गए बहुत हो गए व्हाट्स यू नायका है ना सर व्हाट्स यू नायका सर नायका में आपको अगर 10 इंडिया में 10 लेडीज को फोन करके पूछ लो आपको पता चल जाएगा लॉयल्टी कितनी बड़ी अच्छा है नहीं है 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 100 परसेंट है अच्छा है ओके लॉयल्टी बहुत है सर तो अच्छा और ये नॉट एट दिस प्राइस अगेन दिस ऑल कोई भी ये प्राइस पे लेने लायक नहीं है लेकिन ये धंधे मिस करने लायक भी नहीं है यहाँ से अगर बीस तीस टका गिरता है तो किसी को भी लेना चाहिए अभी तो गिर रहा होगा आई थिंक गिर गया है 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 लेट्स सी और ये प्राइस से बोल रहा तो तो नहीं अच्छी बात है ना तो गिर गया है। 41 वाला और गिरेगा तब लेंगे इन लोग ने क्या किया है हाँ, अभी देखो तो हाँ, अच्छी कंपनी है जैसे जी आर इन्फ्रा जो पुराने हाँ, चावल वो क्या कर रहे हैं सस्ते भाव पे लेके आ रहे हैं बिकॉज दे नो दिस इज दैल्यूड बैंक हम इसमें ग्रो करेंगे जो नई कंपनी के इन्वेस्टर्स क्या कर रहे हैं भैया तुम तुम्हारा धंधा जानो हमको एकदम हाइएस्ट वैल्यूएशन में एंट्री दो एग्जिट करा दो तो वो हाईएस्ट एग्जिट कर रहे हम नीचे पे लेंगे ना जो वैल्यू आएगा तो नहीं तो ये जीआर इन्फ्रा का तो आईपीओ आ गया ना प्रदेश जी आ गया ना सर हमने 850 रुपए में आईपीओ आया बाजार इतना करेक्ट हो गया अभी भी 1500 1600 रुपया है क्या बात है नहीं तो इधर दरअसल दे वर एनीवे दे आर बेसिकली वेरी वेल लॉन्ग टर्म प्लेयर द वे वी हैव स्टेड इन द कंपनी फॉर सो इयर्स सो मेनी टाइम्स यस यस अभी जीआर इन्फ्रा के जो प्रमोटर है दे आर द लार्जेस्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्टर इन द इंडिया टू बिल्ड अ रोड मतलब इंडिया में आज के तारीख में 60 किलोमीटर की रोड बना रहे पर डे जो 4 किलोमीटर हुआ करता था आज से 8 साल पहले जी बता अभी 60 किलोमीटर का 22 प्रतिशत रोड अकेला जीआर इन्फ्रा बनाता है सही बात तो आपका 15 किलोमीटर का कंट्रीब्यूशन है दिन का तो ये जो प्रमोटर है ना ये प्रमोटर की लंबी है तो वो अच्छे वैल्यूएशन भी लाएगा अब जिसको खराब वैल्यूएशन पे लाके फैंसी वैल्यूएशन पे लाके खुद का इन्वेस्टर को एग्जिट कराना है दे विल बिकम अ पेटीएम दे विल बिकम अ नाइका दे विल बिकम अ जोमेटो जो सीरियस इन्वेस्टर है जो लॉन्ग टर्म प्लेयर है दे विल नॉट बाय दिस लेवल और वो अपना आईपीओ भी ये लेवल पे नहीं लेके आएगा अगर कोई प्रमोटर है तो बिकॉज वो मालूम है पेटीएम कितना बनता है वो किसी को भी स्कैम नहीं करेगा दिस सिंपल थिंग है वो किसी को हां दिस इज राइट बॉडी जब उसको निकलने देखो ना कितना शानदार आर ओ ई है कमाने में इंटरेस्ट नहीं है क्या शानदार आर ओ ई जी रहा का मतलब शानदार आर ओ ई है वेरी नाइस nice. ये तो सर बहुत छोटी अभी बहुत छोटी कंपनी है जी आर भाई बहुत छोटी है सर अपना पी का कंपनी है 2013 में लिया हुआ है हां हां मालूम है मेरे को अब सबसे ज्यादा कमाए इसके अंदर और आप लोग किसी पब, अपने पब्लिक पोर्टफोलियो में डालोगे जी आर इन्फ्रा को एक आध में अभी लेने की तैयारी है लिया नहीं है अभी तक ये नए फंड जो हम लोग कर रहे हैं उसमें लेंगे एंड इट्स अ वेरी चीप स्टॉक टुडे बहुत सस्ता है सर ये वैल्यूएशन में आने के बाद भी अच्छा और एक चीज है हाँ. ये जो 820 में जो आईपीओ आया 
ये माल जो बेचा है बेचा है वो मैंने हमने मोतीलाल ने बेचा है प्रमोटर ने तो एक रुपए का माल नहीं बेचा है अरे तेरी आ, आपको बेसिकली फंड में एग्जिट देना था इसलिए सर हो गया ना अभी दस बारह साल हो गए सात साल में तो इन्वेस्टर को तो पैसा देना पड़ेगा ना अरे यार की सेल तो उसकी सेल दस गुना हुई दस, दस साल भी नहीं हुआ इसको तो हमारी हमने क्या अभी रामदेव जी ने ये नए पी फंड में क्या बोल दिया की भैया एग्जिट जल्दी नहीं होगा आपको दस बारह साल उतना पड़ेगा पहले फंड में तो हमने बोला नहीं था ना तो विलो टू गेटर एक्सीडेंट सात साल में उन्तीस गुना इज यूज थिंग दस साल में दस गुना नहीं होता सर पीपल आर डेफिनेटली दे वेंट वेरी गुड मनी देयर इन्वेस्टर्स आर हैप्पी बट एज एन हमने जो कंपनी ढूंढी हम खुद खुश नहीं है कि हमने इतने सस्ते में बेच दिए उन्तीस टाइम ठीक है लेकिन हम शायद सौ गुना विशाल ने नहीं बेची आपने विशाल ने शेयर रखा होगा अपना सर सबने बेच दिया ना पी का पूरा फंड निकल गया ना वो जो आठ टका है वो आठ टाइपी जो आईपीओ में डिप्लॉय हुआ है वो हमारा ही तो है अच्छा आईपीओ में घुस गए आप लोग ओके कोई रास्ता नहीं था मतलब वो लास्ट था फंड वन क्लोज करना था और फंड वन में ऑलरेडी हमने ट्वेंटी सेवन परसेंट आई आर आर दे चुके थे ये लास्ट लेक लगा हुआ था इट वॉज अ गुड टाइम एट गुड प्राइस साढ़े सत्रह हजार सत्रह हजार निफ्टी चल रही थी जी पैसा कम पड़ जाएगा बिकॉज मैं भी हुआ क्या सिटी यूनियन बैंक नहीं है सिटी यूनियन बैंक इंटरव्यू ऑफ द एम डी वेरी गुड तो हाँ जी हाँ कंपनी अब समझ भी ये नहीं आ रहा कि बेचू क्या <laughs> तो इन्वेस्ट को है मुझे बेचना नहीं है बिकॉज भाई पंद्रह परसेंट बन रहा है आई डोंट वांट टू वो कहते ना वन इन द हैंड एंड टू इन द बुशेस टू इन द हैंड वन इन द बुशेस तो वेरी वेरी क्लियर दैट भाई कि अब क्या बेचू इतनी अपॉर्चुनिटी है इस वक्त पैसा कम पड़ रहा है ये हालत है मतलब रिस्क भी डाइवर्सिफाई हो रहा है पंद्रह टका बन भी रहा है आपका आप सिर्फ पांच दस साल का विजन रखो आपका पैसा बनेगा क्या है नहीं मेरे को तो हर साल पैसा बनाना ये सबसे बड़ी दिक्कत है <laughs> तो सर कोई नहीं हम लोग एक एक बोर्ड में उसको स्टॉक बेचने का बहुत मतलब तकलीफ वाला काम है हाँ तो नहीं बेच सकता तो मैं एक ओनली एयरटेल बचा मेरे पास बेचने के लिए बट उसमें भी मेरा एलोकेशन चालीस हजार रुपए तो एच बैंक में पैसा मेरा डबल हो चुका है मतलब मैं करूँ क्या समझ तो मैं छोड़ो दो चार लाख में बच्चा डालेंगे छोड़ देंगे तो बड़ा हम ट्राइंग टू से ट्राइंग टू से इन्वेस्ट करने वाले के लिए इतनी अपॉर्चुनिटी है एक बार बस अपने दिमाग में ये बिठा लें कि भैया यही मेरे जिंदगी है प्रॉपर्टी वॉपर्टी फिक्स डिपॉजिट सब तेल लेने गए कल से ना परसों से मैं गौतमी को बहुत सारे नाम बता दूंगा गौतमी कोई दिक्कत नहीं है आप टच में रह लेना बस वो आपको हमारे पास भी आदमी नहीं है हमारे लोग हमारे प्रोडक्ट समझा समझा के हम सक जाते हैं कि भैया देखो इक्विटी ऐसा होता है ग्लोबल इक्विटी है हम ये करते हैं फिर भी चलो हमारे आर एम से भी हमारा काम कर रहे हैं तो आप आइए और ये काम कीजिए भाई बुक बड़ी होनी चाहिए वो इम्पोर्टेंट है कुंजन जी नहीं है कुंजन जी से बात कर लीजिए कुंजन जी से बात कर लो आज कर लेता हूँ समझाइए उनको ना उनको समझाइए Here for some uh, large meetings in last two days कल अहमदाबाद आया हूँ मैं तो so, ये uh, bets की meeting कर रहा हूँ कुछ बड़े investors हैं but मैं evening में आठ बजे के बाद free हो जाऊँगा तो I'll speak after eight o'clock आप उनसे बात कीजिए उनको ये बोलिए मेरा नाम मत लीजिएगा देखिए बहुत simple है भाई आज मैं कितनी भी कोशिश करूँ एक investor मुझे पूरा पैसा नहीं देता जो बाकी बचा हुआ पैसा है वो किसी को दे रहा वहां पर वो भी पैसा कमा ले और मैं भी पैसा कमा तो गलत क्या है गलत क्या है गलत। पैरेलल 
सर सिंपल है ना कस्टमर मैंने बना लिए क्रॉस सेल कौन करेगा कौन करेगा तो क्रॉस सेल के लिए तो प्रदेश जी विचार हम और पुराने दोस्त हैं ऐसा भी नहीं कि आज नया कोई पार्टनर आया भाई दस बीस तक काम मिले काम होता अभी प्राइवेट इक्विटी में दो चार इन्वेस्टर इंटरेस्टेड थे एक्चुअली मैंने इनिशिएटिव नहीं लिया बिकॉज बहुत कम था और अब वो हो क्या रहा उनसे कुछ बिजनेस भी नहीं हो पा रहा तो प्राइवेट इक्विटी में डॉलर में कुछ भी बचता है तो बताना मेरे को आप पक्का सर पक्का लेट लेट हो गया था मैं को मैं इंडिया में था एक महीना नहीं कोई कुछ फिलहाल वो उनको उनके वो हम तब पुश करते नहीं है तो कल आपकी मीटिंग कराता हूँ मैं अच्छा मुझे बताइए ये मास फाइनेंशियल क्यों नहीं जा रहा है क्या हो गया उसको कुछ प्रॉब्लम आई मार्केट नहीं प्रीमियम दे रहा है क्या है देखो पंकज भाई का एक डायलॉग है ना हर तेजी का लीडर अलग होता है तो इन्फोसिस डन वेरी गुड उसमें कोई डाउट नहीं है लेकिन 2003 का 3000 का भाव आते आते 2010 हो गया ठीक है तो एनबीएफसी का दौर रहा 2014 से 2019 अब ये जो स्थिति आई है ओके उसमें एक्सेट बजाज फाइनेंस कुछ नहीं चला ठीक है बहुत सारी जैसे उज्जीवन जैसी कंपनियां तो बंद हो गई इक्विटास का पता पता नहीं है क्या होने वाला है ठीक है मार्केट ने प्रीमियम देना बंद कर दिया मार्केट इज नॉट गिविंग प्रीमियम टू एनबीएफ हर एक साइकिल आता है जैसे मेटल नहीं चला सात साल इंफ्रा नहीं चला दस साल रियल स्टेट नहीं चला चौदह साल नहीं बट व्हाट अबाउट एयू स्मॉल बैंक उसको तुम प्रीमियम मिल रहा है नहीं जो बड़ी साइज में थोड़ी बड़ी है साइजेबल है जिन्होंने एक्सपेंशन ब्रांचेस की है जिनका कस्टमर बेस बड़ा है उनको प्रीमियम मिल रहा है ऐसा नहीं कि नहीं मिल रहा है बट मास डू डोंट यू थिंक मास विल विल आल्सो करेंट द कोर्स एंड टेक इट देयर नहीं इट इज वेरी रीजनेबल एंड चीपर प्राइस एट करंट लेवल इन अ मास ओके बट मार्केट्स आर नॉट गिविंग प्रीमियम टू दिस बिजनेस लुकिंग एट द साइज they are not having footprint in the entire uh, india right now like au is expanding okay au has reached to that size mass is restricted towards a gujarat based financial company the return on investment that price to book remain the very attractive if you look at the fundamental of the company they are still working on 80 90% of return on equity they are available at 2 2 and half price to book so kuch galat nahi hai company ke andar bas thoda bazar ka saath mil jaye chal jayega stock देखो सर क्या है पता नहीं अब ये भी ये पता है मुझे प्रॉब्लम जो बता रहे हो बट हैविंग सेट दैट इस तरह रिकॉर्डिंग पॉज कर ले कर लो